what do you want to see from Kyler, from Emory, from Chikari in this week in practice? I mean, consistency. I mean, I mean, same thing every week. Yeah, obviously, Kyler's been struggling lately, a lot of turnovers. Um, have you guys been able, I guess, to identify what his, his main issue has been, whether it's confidence, whether it's the still dealing with nagging injury stuff, or whatever? Have you guys been able to identify what the issue's been? Um, I mean, we just got we got to take care of the ball in certain situations. You know, I mean, um, you know, probably most of it probably has to do with trying to do too much. You know, just you know, let the defense dictate where the ball goes. I mean, you know, when you're back there and you know games like that, you know, I knew how that game was going to go. That defense I've been against multiple times in my career, a lot, and so it's a it's a grind. And they keep everybody low, you know, it's 13 to 10, it's 14 to 7. Like, that's just how their defense is when they're good and motivated. And I knew they would be motivated, so, you know, I knew that when we got down there, we had to get points. Touchdowns were a premium, right? And so, you know, we, and we got down there really more than most teams do. We got down there a pretty good bit. We just didn't get anything. Out. We got zero out of two possessions down there, which is – or three. Um one was right outside, but, and that, and that's really the story of the game. I mean, you know, I thought we would hit a couple more shots on them, um, and we didn't hit any, you know, and so typically the way those games go, you hit a couple of those shots and you have 350, 360 yards and you score 20 something points, you know, we didn't hit any. And so it was, that, that was the, that was the thing that kind of shocked me the most is I thought we would have hit a couple one-on-one -on -one shots, and we didn't. And we talked about it last week, kind of that thin line between checking down when needed, but yeah. also still being aggressive. How do you think Tyler kind of threaded that line? I, there was a lot of times where he did. You know, a lot of times he checked it down, and we got 10 or 12 yards. Obviously, the the one in the red zone, he he, he threw, and it got picked. I mean, he could have he could have checked that one down, or or could have threw it out there where that guy gets it or nobody does. There was multiple uh, things that could have happened on that play. Um, but we just we have to learn from those situations, and you know, because that those kind of situations put you in, in a little bit of a pickle, right? And so, and the momentum of the game changes, and, and all the rest. And so, but there was a lot of times throughout the course of the game where, I mean, heck, they were dropping eight, they were bringing everybody and dropping eight, bringing everybody, dropping eight. And so, the dynamic of that is uh, is choppy. You know, I don't know if that makes sense, but we hit them on some screens that probably made them drop eight more, which windows are shorter, and then that's going to make you dump it down more, you know. We probably didn't get some one-on-one -on -one throws. I thought we would have gotten the second half because we were hitting them on those tunnel screens, and that, that, that got them out of the, the blitz mode and, and into more of the drop eight mode, which when they do that, you got to run it, which I thought we ran the ball really efficient. I was very, very pleased in our run game, and uh, we just had to hit on a couple throws. In the past, that in games you're a ride or die with your quarterback. Mm -hmm. Can you explain why you think that's the best approach? And is there ever a tipping point for you? Oh, there's absolutely that? tipping points. I mean, nothing's a nothing lives in a vacuum in this world for sure. But I think it's important when you're out there that you know that you have the backing of the people that are on the sideline. You know that that's important, and it was important to me as a player. Um, it was important to me as a coach. It was a way <clears throat> that I was raised as an as a young coach. You know, and um, and I just think that's the right way to be. But I mean, there's a tipping point with everything, right? But I do like them. There's a there's a level of freedom that you have to play with to be efficient. And I don't know if you can play with that freedom if you're in the back of your mind if you're thinking, you know, if I mess up, coach is gonna yank me type deal. So, yeah, I mean, but there's a tipping point for everything. You guys right early in the season. Mm -hmm. uh, Texas A&M game was phenomenal. What, what do you feel? You know, I mean, we've, through the course of games over the last three games, I should say, or four, um, there's been some situations that happened early that probably hurt the confidence of our pass game. You know, I mean, those those interceptions, like the, the Virginia one in the red zone, you know, those kind of plays, you know, they're, they're going to uh, limit the number of opportunities, right? Because that's just the way it is. So we have to... Ultimately, to be a free-flowing, free-throwing offense, 
uh, the ball has to get checked down. It has to get put in the right place. That way, confidence is built over time, right? And so relying on the run game at times has a lot to do with our run game is pretty good. And you know what? I mean, we got to do what's, what's working, right? How do you feel like the receivers are dealing with creating separation and, and running the correct depths? They're doing good. I mean, I, honestly, I thought our receivers played really well Saturday. It's hard to see because, you know, they didn't get a lot of opportunities. Um, we had some situations um, that, you know, we had some double moves and stuff that, that we had we had people and the ball just went to other places. Uh, but they're they're staying positive and they're, they're playing hard. They, I mean, we ask our receivers to do a lot. I mean, our receivers are part of the run game because we, you know, we get them in there and block the edge guy, and you know, their, their effort has been um, has been very noticeable, you know, and they're and they're staying positive, and they know that our pass game is is there, you know, it's there. I mean, you know, I've never, you know, typically in my career, it's been the complete opposite. To be quite honest with you, it's been the run game that you struggle with, and the pass game is kind of, you know, the easy part. Uh, it's a little bit different right now, but we'll work through it. And that's my job to to come up with with a way that everybody understands and has a clear mind, you know. And, and that falls on me. I gotta I gotta do a better job explaining to them and, and designing things that are that are wrong, more appropriate for for what we're facing. With that said, how difficult is it when what you're seeing on the practice field during the week isn't translating to Saturday? Well, I mean, look, I mean, you want things to mirror what you see in practice, right? And and that's just the reality. And, I mean, some of the stuff, I, you know, I got to give credit to, to them, too, and their defense. I mean, you know, I think that um, the adjustments he made through the course of the game were good, um, you know, and, and ultimately it, it shortened windows for us. And so, um, you know, but, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not happy with the pass game right now either, you know, and so – and that's – that's my job to get that fixed. And so I promise you that that is, that is a, main, a main focus of mine currently. Philosophically, in general, against a two-quarterback approach? You know, in general, I mean, I've done it before. You know, I've done it before uh, based on, you know, the couple times I've done it was more so what I said the other day that um, I don't know if, People understood what I was talking about, but there was a situation in the past where kids got hurt and I had to burn a kid's year because he was the last quarterback I had. And then I had two games left and the starter came back and it just wasn't fair to me not to play the kid. You know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I burned his year and it was a situation where, you know, I just I played both because I want a year to matter if I burn it, you know what I mean? And so that was a situation that was pretty unique and, uh, and, it, and it worked out good. You know, both of those kids were very supportive of each other and, and, and our room is very supportive. You know, I mean, you know, we game plan every week and every week is different, you know, because the source of information is different. And so, you know, I'm not, I'm not against it, no. Um, you know, I, I haven't done it much in my past, I'll be honest with you, but I have done it before. You've been talking about how supportive all the quarterbacks are of each other. How supportive have they been of Tyler? The last couple of weeks, it's probably the toughest stretch he's had, I think, in his entire career. No, I mean, extremely supportive. I mean, it's not, and it's not all him either. I mean, I mean, nobody lives on an island alone, you know. I mean, most of the blame goes on me, to be quite honest with you, because I got to get him prepared to, to make those plays in those critical situations, you know, and it's only a handful of situations, you know, so ultimately, you know, I live on that island more alone than anybody does. And so, you know, it, it's a lot of it's a lot of collaborative effort that goes into it. But he, I mean, everybody supports everybody supports the guy that's playing. And that's been since day one. And that's going to continue to be. Um, when the passing game was struggling as it is, uh, or as it was on Saturday, um, for sure, Smith probably is the guy who might have some of the best big playability on the offense. Um, I don't remember if I ever remember seeing him. I think you guys won from the backfield. Was that a consideration on Saturday getting the ball more often? It was, you know, 
he had a couple opportunities in the past game. I wish we'd have hit the vertical to him in the end zone. I mean, I knew we were going to have that. We were just a little off. That would have been a nice one to have, right? Um, I did not package him in the backfield that week. Uh, it was a different type game back there, to be quite honest with you. I mean, I don't know if that was evident to you, but um, that was a, a that was a game in, in the run plays we were running against that defense. Running backs that have taken all those reps need to read those keys. Does that make sense? And so um, it was just, and that wasn't anything that I, like, didn't do because of him. It was I knew how that game was going to be, and I knew how that game was going to be at running back. And, uh, and that was a different, that's a different style game. I mean, Fletch was awesome, like awesome, awesome. But, look, that was a rough one. Like, it was a physical football game. And that wasn't a, a in-space football game back there, you know. And so, you know, that is on the table every week for sure. But I got to make decisions based on what I rep in practice for what I rep in the game. I can't, like, I can't do things in practice that I don't think is going to be pertinent to the game, right? And so, um, but I will say this about him and everybody else. I mean, look. There's a lot of playmakers out there that didn't get the opportunities that they wanted. That's That was just the kind of game that was, you know. And uh, I want to get everybody that can make plays the ball more, and especially him. And so, um, you know, it, was, it is what it is in that sense. But, you know, all of them had a handful of opportunities, and we were just a little off on all of them, you know. It was just one thing here and one thing there. But the, the vertical route by him was, um, was one I honestly thought we were going to hit. And I thought that when we lined up, I knew that we had the matchup we wanted. And he's great at that route. And it was just six inches off, you know. First of all, said that Florida State's defense likes to put on coverage, maybe some cover one, cover zero as well. What's unique about that kind of defense to you from what you've seen thus far? I mean, they're just really good in the back end. I mean, the ability to play man to man coverage is something that every defense wants, right? Not every defense has. And when you can play man coverage, then it kind of frees up everybody else, right? And so um, they're just talented back there. You know, they, they can line up and play. They can mix it up, but they can they can line up and play man too, which is what they do the most of the time. And Tyler though, still seems to be, um, I don't know, under throwing sometimes and um, not not like he used to be a few games ago. Obviously. We've said this before, when he was hit hard yeah. and hurt previously, how is he doing physically? He just doesn't seem. Yeah, I mean, I think that, like, to say that that's got nothing to do with it, it would probably be, you know, I don't know. I mean, um, all I can go with was what, you know, our doctors and trainers tell us. And, I mean, nobody is going to play the game if they're not cleared to play the game, right? And so, um, and, and everything coming out of his mouth is, is – is I'm is good, feels good, and all the rest. You know, I think it has a little bit more to do with just trying to fit it in a tight window, you know, and trying to do a little too much, and um, and trying to be a little bit too perfect. You know, I mean, that's just sometimes you just gotta let it rip. You know what I mean? And either we get it or nobody does. And so, you know, play a little freer probably. And in, in games like that, that's very common. Is like we know that opportunities are going to be few, and so we gotta take advantage of those opportunities. And sometimes when they come up. You know, you you look, you wanted a little too much. Just to follow up, as a coach, how do you get that let it rip mentality um, to not be too perfect? I think it? comfort. You know, I mean, just I mean, you you gotta have a, a certain level of comfort out there, and um, and freedom just to, to let it go. You know, I mean, um, it, it there's no magic formula for that. You know, and I think that. When you have a couple games where you make a few mistakes, I mean, that can get in your head a little bit, you know. It's just natural. It's human, you know. I mean, everybody does, you know. And so when those opportunity, opportunities present themselves again, you know, you want to, you know, try to be like, I got to make this work, you know. Just execute the play, you know. And he can do it. He'll make that throw 100 times out of 100, you know, or 90 times, 99 times out of 100. To build his confidence back up because he's getting just he's getting killed on social media. I, I, I know. You pay attention to that? What? I said you pay attention to that. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, he's he, he really is getting it like crazy hard. Yeah. Um, I'm um, probably hate a little bit too, huh? Yeah. Not, <laughs> as much, not as much as 
Yes. Well, look, I need to be. I mean, look, there's no reason, there's no reason to deflect blame in our business. But I will say this: is that, you know, that position is is a tough one. The quarterback position is a, a position where things are going good. Like the beginning of the year, you mentioned it. We're probably giving a little too much credit, right? When things are going good, and when things are going bad, you're going to get more blame, and that's just the way it is. And we signed up for that, and so um, you got to have thick skin. You know, you, you honestly, if if you're a college football player today and you're reading social media, then you're making a huge mistake. You know, you're making a huge mistake because it's not the critic that counts, right? And I think everybody's read that and knows that but you know people have their people have um they're entitled to their opinion for sure but we're we're entitled to not read it <laughs> you know what i mean and uh just stay the course man stay the course and keep playing and so you know i mean i know that there's a level of frustration out there i mean we're frustrated too right and he's frustrated and so everybody's frustrated and uh it's our job to to approach things in a way to where we can go out there and get better because that's ultimately what we have to do is we got to go get better today. Now that uh, three in games four with the goal, um, and you probably have to play without burning his red shirt, do you stay using him a little bit more? Like I'm mixing up a little bit, even it's not like swapping quarterbacks. Yeah. The whole, just getting him in. I would say everything's on the table. Kind of what Coach Cristobal said, right? And I, I will piggyback what he said. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.